Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be trying a free-to-play MMORPG called Star Trek Online that was published by Perfect World Entertainment. I'm coming into this game from the point of view of someone that doesn't really know a whole lot about the Star Trek universe, so I'm probably going to make a few mistakes with pronouncing things and a few mistakes with the lore, so do forgive me. Okay, so let's create a character. It looks like there's a lot of races in this game and there's three factions, the Starfleet, the Romulan and the Klingon. You can be a human, and Dorian, he's got antennas sticking out of his head. Bajorian, he just kind of looks like a human with a weird nose. Benzit, this guy looks like a fish dude. Okay. Betazoid, he kind of looks like a human as well. The Bolian, it looks like someone's tried to chop his face in half. What is this? A Ferengi. Look at those ears. And his ears are kind of connected to his eyebrows. The Packles, look at those eyebrows. The Regalian, this guy doesn't look too happy, does he? Look at that face. Well, this is an attractive race, the Saurian. He just kind of looks like a lizard man. Female version, also equally as attractive. The Tellarite, these people look like space dwarves. The Trill, these are basically humans with tattoos on their face. The Vulcan race, I'm going to assume this is what Spock is. Spock is the only Star Trek character that I actually know of. And this race is just called Alien, okay got the Romulan and the alien again in this faction who's part of the Klingon fucking hell this is a male Klingon is it the Klingons are obviously the bad guy faction because this is showing up in red wow you can be you can be a crocodile man the Gorn some of these races are really interesting the Lethian I have no idea how to pronounce that I think it's Norsican or Norsine I have no idea but this guy looks like Predator just look at those teeth this is the Orion race. Compared to the other things in this faction, this guy actually looks kind of normal. Minus the stitches in his head and the green skin. And the alien again. Okay, so you've just got generic aliens for each faction. It seems like none of the races in this game are gender locked. There's a female version for everyone, it would seem. Fucking hell, she's scary. She looks like a zombie with tits. Seems like there's three classes in this game. Engineering, science, and tactical. From what I can tell, this is just your standard damage class. So here you have the option to choose between six different sets of clothes. Oh wow, you can actually put scars on your character. The character creation is quite in depth. It's a lot better than I expected it to be. You can do the exact same thing for tattoos. So if I wanted, I could have a tattoo that just takes up all of my head. Ultimate face tattoo and you can change the color of it. Lots and lots of sliders in this game. I'm actually impressed with the character creation does seem to be pretty decent. I think I'm happy with that. I've completely failed at making Spock, but this guy will do. Kinshiro Leroy Jenkins. That's my formal name. And we get to name our ship. Nice. Um, I think I'm going to go with something classy like Wormhole. Wormhole Penetrator. There we go. For extra RP value, you can write a biography for your character. I like it. So I've took the time to write a biography for my character. I'm not sure if it makes too much sense with the Star Trek lore, but I've tried my best. Captain Kinshiro spent most of his life as a slave to the Klingon faction. Taken from his family as a young boy, he became disconnected from his emotions as he worked as a laborer during many Klingon mining operations. As time passed, Kinshiro started to resent his brutish captors and began plotting an escape. During a scouting mission for a new Klingon particle accelerator, Kinshiro noticed the two Klingon officers in charge had been drinking the night before and seemed to not be paying as much attention to the slaves as normal. Kinshiro took this opportunity to break from his chains and throw an antimatter grenade up into the sky. Due to the planet's low gravity, it took a long time to land which gave Kinshiro time to steal a Klingon fighter and escape seconds before the planet was blown to pieces. Eventually he was found by Starfleet. He was hungry, cold, and almost lifeless. They took him in and trained him. After years of training, Kinshiro became the captain of the USS Wormhole Penetrator, and to this day holds a burning desire to get revenge on the Klingons who took him from his family. I'm sure this piece of writing is going to get a lot of critique in the comments, but I don't even care. <laughs> Engage, let's start this game. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Star Trek Online. I'm guessing this is like the training area for Starfleet. Oh, that's nice. This is all voice acted. I wonder if every quest in this game is voice acted. Press shift, you can sprint. It's really weird hearing an English voice come out of that face. Straight away, I think the user interface is quite clean. It's not too much of a clusterfuck. It's quite minimalist, actually. This guy's a fucking dog humanoid. I didn't see that in playable races. So this is set in San Francisco in the future, I think. I wonder if we can jump over this fence. 
no shame i wanted to go for a swim in the river so it does appear to be like a tab targeting game sweet so i'm the first officer now apparently oh okay it doesn't seem as though everything's voice acted i suppose that would take a long time there you go dude drink that water right i think we're going to the ship now is this my ship does that actually say on the ship wormhole penetration i think it does <laughs> nice I wonder if I actually get to manually fly the ship. That'd be fun. I'm not like the leader of the ship yet. I'm like the second in command, it would seem. Here we go. We're taking off. Okay, it's a little bit buggy in places. Right, so we're under attack now. Oh, fuck. Did he... Oh, my God. He just got vaporized. Oh, that's not good. He's going to get sucked out. Why am I not getting sucked out? Okay. The ship sealed itself off. Nice. Get evaporated, mate. I'm pretty sure these laser guns would just kill you in one hit, to be fair. The combat feels a little bit meh. Oh, fuck. That's not good. I think our captain just got taken. So they've kidnapped our captain and we don't know where they are. Because their ship's closed. Oh, no, not good. You are now the captain of the ship. Your orders. Your orders are to lock onto my combat and fire. Oh, my God. No. The captain just got killed. And he's just made me captain. Not the most convincing death scene, I have to say. My character doesn't give a shit, does he? There's just no emotion in his face. Looks like we're at war now. Time to take command. It would appear as though... Oh my god, I get to con actually control the ship. I can't believe we're actually flying. And there it is. USS Wormhole Penetrator. Now we've got some speed. How do we stop? How do we stop? How do we stop? Oh! I'm crashing into it. I don't know how to stop this thing. <laughs> how do you stop the bloody thing? Okay, let's just do that. One. Okay. Oh, this is fucking cool. I wasn't expecting to actually be able to control a ship. Yeah, space. You must be within 10 kilometers of an enemy to attack it. Boom. Michael Bay would be proud of that explosion. Oh, fuck. There's the uh, Klingon ship. Oh, bloody hell, now we're going fast. Now we're moving. Oh, fucking hell, I got a little bit close to that explosion. There we go. Easy. I wonder what happens if I crash into the rock. Oh, nothing. Nothing happens if I crash into this rock. Okay. I really need my ship to do a handbrake turn or something. As you attack the ships, they have shields. And depending on the direction you hit them from, depends on if you'll do damage on them. So you need to get their shields down. Oh no! Now our friends are about to get killed. I think we're killing him. Nice. There we go. There's sweet, sweet revenge. Let's see if it's possible to just crash our ship into this planet. Can you do it? Can we? Please. Please. Oh no! <laughs> you can't do it. You just kind of hit the planet. Pretty sure we've just hit an invisible barrier. Lame. I wanted to crash my ship into the sun. Fucking hell, that's a nice explosion, isn't it? We are constantly under attack. Now they're bringing Death Stars to us. Brilliant. I like how you have a bunch of different options for replies. Oh, wow. I wonder if I can fly into the sun now. Oh, shit. Now we're, now we're traveling fast. Now we're at, like, warp speed or something. Oh, come on. I want to reach the surface of the sun. Realistically, though, at this range, we'd be melting by now. So cool that you can, like, fly around the solar system and stuff and just, like, have a look around. Fly into this. Nope. <laughs> oh, we've got a binary system of stars over there. Can we fly over here? How far out can we go? We can actually just fly out to other solar systems. Fucking hell, this is cool. It's just nice to be able to fly my ship around and explore. Something I'm not overly convinced on is the size of these planets in relation to the stars. That doesn't seem to be scientifically accurate to me. Stars are fucking huge. Planets are realistically like specks in comparison to the size of stars. I think there's a good chance that these are other players. Fucking cool. You can just see other players in their ships and they have different ships. These Borg people are fucking assholes. They're just attacking civilian ships. Why? So I'm about to beam down to this planet and I get to actually pick an away team out of three different characters to come with me. And they each have different abilities. Right, so now we're actually on an alien planet. Yeah, Starfleet, they're all cheering. They're well happy. Bad guys. Oh, he just fucking executed a civilian. 
Oh no, they're okay, I think. You're right, love. Oh, fucking hell. She's turned into a drone now. Not really a fan of the melee ability. It kind of locks you into an animation. It feels really slow. I think I prefer the ship combat over the ground combat. The ground combat is really slow. And it doesn't really feel finished. Oh god, look at this guy. I bet he gets all the women, doesn't he? He's got a fucking gun for a hand. Brilliant. I bet that's useful in the bedroom, isn't it? I am taking so much damage. I think I'm fucked. Oh, the controls are fucking weird. I can't actually tell who I'm targeting right now. All right, please die. There we go. We just made it. Oh, a giant cube. I think I've got back up. Oh, there's cubes everywhere. Why would you have a spaceship that's a cube? I don't really see the advantage of making your spaceship a cube. This is going to be a big explosion. Fucking hell. Nice. Sweet, we're now back at home. We're back to Earth. Back at the space dock. I like the way my character stands. He looks so polite. Why is Iron Man here? I am so confused. Over here, we've got a nice view of Earth. He's called me Cadet. Cheeky bastard. I'm a lieutenant, I'll have you know. Oh, wow. So this is where everyone hangs out. My ship looks like a piece of crap compared to this thing down here. Oh, nice. Here we go. Customized starship. So you can customize the ship's interior. A lot of these cost microtransaction currency, it would seem. But you do have a few free versions to choose from. You can actually change the whole look of my ship through these templates. You can also go into advanced, so you can mix and match different parts. Click on this icon to automatically plot a course for the mission. Bloody hell, this is the size of the game. Each of these things here are different star systems. There's got to be about 60 or 70 different star systems in this game. Oh, okay. Well, this is different. Press B to toggle between shooter mode and RPG mode. Oh my god, the controls are so weird. My character's like running around on his own. Hello? What? What is with this control scheme? Character, stop. Uh, this shooter mode seems to be really buggy. It's like making my character auto move and it's fucking annoying. Oh, that's cool. You've got to match the wavelengths. I like that. I think the shooting and the general controls so far are probably this game's biggest weakness. Oh, fucking hell, there's another giant ship. I haven't seen this one before. Slave Master Battleship. Wow. Seems like we've got something to loot over here. Here we go. Uh, stretch. Make them nice and thin. There we go. I really like that little mini game. It's quite fun. This is one giant ass gas planet. It's almost as big as its host star, which I find a little bit hard to believe. I don't think you get gas planets that big, to be honest. Just really cool to fly around and look at all the different stars and planets and stuff. I think that's my favorite part about this game. I've always been fascinated by space. I watch a space documentary like every night before bed because, I don't know, it just kind of gives me something to think about and helps me sleep. So this is planet Vulcan, okay. It looks a little bit like Mars, doesn't it? Can I murder people? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, I can't murder people. I wanted to vaporize this guy, he's looking too smug. This may be a solar system with just one planet, but it looks like quite a cool planet. Lots of landmass. From a science point of view, I don't really think it makes much sense for there to be this many giant asteroids so close to this planet. Like, realistically, a few of those things would be enough to cause mass extinction on this planet. Fucking hell, this is a good looking planet. This is probably the best looking place we've visited so far. It'd be nice if I could get some more ground combat abilities. I've still got the same two that I had when I started the game. Earl Grey Tea. What is an alien doing with Earl Grey Tea? This guy's betraying us, okay. And you think you know someone. Does this guy have three legs? Nice one, Evolution. Oh my god, that ship just crashed into us. Save me, Dad! And we just got suicide bomb. Lovely. Just what we needed. Die. There we go. It would seem as though you can just plot a course to anywhere in the galaxy. So let's open with this. Open with that. Then put on this. There we go. Slowly getting used to the ship combat. Slowly. Well, this seems like a safe place to build a fucking spaceport. Right, get away before it blows up. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. Fly. Ouch. Uh, I'm a brilliant captain, aren't I? Let's just fly into explosions. That's going to do our ship a lot of good, isn't it? Oh my god, everything's just crashing into me. Look, the character's just fucking moving on his own. It always happens 
when I go into first person mode. I'm not sure if it's a bug or what. It's just annoying. It's not a keyboard issue because this only happens when I'm using the shooter mode. I've got my little friend keeping me company today. Something I like about the missions in this game is they actually feel like missions, not just quests that are over in five minutes. They actually take a little bit of time and there's multiple things you need to do to actually complete the mission. This game feels really story driven. I'm pretty sure you could probably just play this like a single player game if you wanted to. Every time I beam onto one of these facilities or ships, they literally look like they're copy and paste. They all look exactly the same. The game's starting to get a bit repetitive now and the combat system's about as much fun as gluing your penis to your neighbor's fence. This literally feels like the exact same mission that I'd done about 10 minutes ago. My ship must be a bit of a beast if it can take on three other ships at once. Please don't be another copy paste. Oh that's good, at least this one's slightly different. So this time we're fighting crocodile people, lovely. Oh fucking hell, he just lobbed a big rock at me. It's quite fitting that their home planet is a big swamp. Okay, so I've played Star Trek Online for just over four hours now, and I feel as though I've got a decent enough first impressions of the game. So as always with the series, we're now going to talk about the pros and the cons, the good things and the bad things, starting with the pros. Just bear in mind that this is a first impressions and not a review, so please treat it as such. Star Trek Online is a free-to-play game, which means you've got nothing to lose in giving it a try. There's a lot of race diversity in this game, and the fact that there's two different races adds replayability to the game. The character creation is actually quite good, you've got plenty of sliders as well as scar and tattoo options to help you make a unique character. The missions and narrative in Star Trek Online are actually quite decent. It doesn't feel like typical MMO questing. I'd say it's actually more comparable to a single player game in this aspect as each mission can take between 15 and 20 minutes. The game has a lot of voice acting which is always nice. In Star Trek Online you can actually control and customise your very own ship. The ship combat isn't amazingly fun but it does work for the most part. So now let's talk about the cons. The game feels a bit buggy. I experienced multiple times where my character and some cutscenes were just glitching out. The shooter control mode just felt completely broken and pointless too. The ground combat in Star Trek Online feels incredibly lackluster. The animations aren't great, it feels slow, static and lacks any kind of impactfulness. Despite the missions being quite decent, I started to run into a lot of copy pasted sections of the game which just felt a bit lazy. The overall movement and animations in this game aren't very convincing and just feel a bit unfinished. Overall, Star Trek Online is an MMORPG that does a pretty good job with its missions and narrative. However, in terms of gameplay, feels a bit lacklustre, especially the ground combat. The game has quite a lot of customization options, either through the character creation and changing the appearance of your ship, but it just feels like the game's lacking a certain level of overall polish and I found myself getting bored after about 90 minutes of gameplay. Would I play this game again? Probably not. I thought the ship combat was cool at first, but the novelty of it wore off quite quickly. Would I recommend this game to my viewers? If you're a fan of Star Trek then I think it's worth taking a look at since it's a free to play game, but if you're not then this may not be the game for you. So that's it for this video guys, if you've had the chance to play Star Trek online then let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. The next MMORPG I'll cover in this series will be Revelation Online if I can get onto the Chinese version of the game. I hope you enjoyed the video, you take it easy and I'll see you again really soon.